The Tennessee Titans just changed everything by acquiring wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. Rand Carthon woke up and chose violence. And what I talk about before I get into the team and kind of the direction that I can see them going in, I want to talk about DeAndre Hopkins himself. Now, right here, I'm going to show you his career statistics up to this point. And I want to already throw out the narratives because I know a lot of teams were going for DeAndre Hopkins. And now that he's a Tennessee Titan, some people are going to try to poo-poo this move and say that, oh, he still can't run, he can't separate. If we watch DeAndre Hopkins, and I watch film on him a lot, especially this season with Arizona in the nine games that he played. So knowing DeAndre Hopkins, he was never truly the guy who was a burner. Now, he can run the route tree, but what he's going to do, he's going to get contested catches. He does not drop the football, and he's a target, somebody that you can really depend on and rely on, and we saw that in the volume and targets and catches. So now as we look at the games played for in his, his entire career, we see in 2022, played nine games, but he had the suspension. In 2021, this was the only year that we can really knock how many games he played with injury. So I want to get that out of the way first, but talking about the Tennessee Titans now, the AFC South is losing sleep tonight, especially because we bring him in and look at what we already have. Now, we know our offense, Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, drafted Ty J. Spears, Traylon Burks, Nick Westbrook, and Kine, some of the guys that we already have. And now we lost Nate Davis, but we brought in Andre Dillard. We drafted Peter Skaronsky. And I want to talk about this offense, particularly because we know what Ryan Tannehill is. And I think the question is, how far can he take us in this offense? Now, I told you guys, and especially my biggest training camp question for this team, I think it's been answered. Because I asked, were they all in or were they all out? And I'm seeing that now they're all in, especially after re-signing Jeffrey Simmons, one of the top five defensive tackles in football. So now... What I'm seeing is Ryan Tannehill, they believe in him. They drafted Will Levis in the second round, still have Malik Willis on the roster. So we got some guys. And I think it's kind of that approach is we're not 100% sure Ryan Tannehill right now has to have the edge. But even if we're not 100% sure, we got three talented guys in the room. And what we want to do, there's no telling if we can win the Super Bowl, because we see the, we see the Baltimore Ravens, we see the Cincinnati Bengals, we see the Kansas City Chiefs. But when we look at the AFC and the landscape of it, we just want to get to the dance. And I think this is a team that can get to the dance. I look at their cornerback room, especially bringing in Sean Murphy Bunting. Now they lost David Long. They lost to Marcus Walker. But I look at what they brought back in that room. I see a very solid team and a team that added some things to the secondary, even though last year they struggled against the pass, but they were exceptional against the run. So I'm expecting a more balanced defense this year, still being good against the run. And when I talk about the offense with Ryan Tannehill getting back on track, we know he can be a playoff quarterback. He had the number one seed in the AFC. Derrick Henry's going to be fully healthy this year. Still got Hassan Haskins. Still got Traylon Burks, who's looking to get better. So what we bring in DeAndre Hopkins, we are all in on this thing. And when I say we just want to get to the dance, that's the playoffs. Now, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we have some other young teams who look to be competitive with the Texans and the Colts. But when I look at the teams... And I look at the Tennessee Titans, I think this is a team who could be one or two in that division. I think a team who can make the playoffs and be in that dance. And it's any given Sunday in the NFL because we talk about, yes, I love Joe Burrow. Yes, I love Patrick Mahomes. Yes, I love the new weapons that Lamar Jackson has. But I see these Tennessee Titans and all it takes is one bad snap. One bad fumble, one drop pass. Mike Vrabel is one of the best head coaches in the game. These are some of the things that I already talked about with this team. And I was looking at other teams that were looking at DeAndre Hopkins, particularly some of those teams as far as the New England Patriots, some of the other teams, but the Tennessee Titans, getting him is a, is a major power move. And I think that now where they have shaken the table, he's the guy who's going to come in. I don't have the exact contract details just yet, but as I get that update, I'm going to let that down in the comments and we could talk about that as well, but he's going to come in prove himself, prove that he's still that guy. And I don't understand the narrative that he wasn't that guy. Because, like I said, I've watched the film. I've seen that same type of guy that I used to see. It's just in a different package. And we understand that last year, the Arizona Cardinals, they were a struggling team. Kyler Murray got hurt. The offensive line was struggling. Things were not clicking like they should have been last year. So you come in, you bring in Jonathan Gannon, you bring in some of that coaching staff. This is a new team, and we understand why. Because we weren't good enough last year. So 
I look at the Tennessee Titans and to what magnitude this propels them into, I think it's safe to say, regardless of what we think about Ryan Tannehill, regardless of what some people may say about DeAndre Hopkins, I personally don't think he's washed. I think he still has a lot left in the tank. And I look at the entire landscape of the team. Now, where I want to take this to is some people say that we're trying to replace what we did with A.J. Brown. Now, we know we traded A.J. Brown to the Philadelphia Eagles. We can kind of say Traylon Burks was his replacement. Now, when we talk about Traylon Burks, what type of receiver is he? I think last year, of course, there's still some development in his game. But I think last year, we tried to use him is a guy that he truly isn't. When I look at Traylon Burks, I see a guy who's excelling in run after the catch. And I think now he's going to have more of those opportunities. Think about DeAndre Hopkins. We're going to have to lighten the box because we got very good receivers, very solid receivers, even though we don't have a lot of big names outside of Burks and DeAndre Hopkins. But now we're lightening the boxes. That's going to let him run. That's going to let Ty J Spears run. And also, this is going to make things easier on Ryan Tannehill. He, he's a guy that's prone to forcing some throws, especially in some airing moments. But right now with DeAndre Hopkins, a guy who I think you can trust. So what we're going to do is now we can unlock Traylon Burks, get that same guy that we saw for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And now DeAndre Hopkins being that prototypical X receiver, being that number one guy who's going to move the sticks, who's going to draw the coverage. It's, think about what this is going to do for everybody. So now... Like I said, we see the offensive line, Peter Skaronski, expecting him to profile as a guard for this team. And like we all said, he was a tackle prospect who some teams viewed as strictly a guard. And I think that now, even though Nicholas petit Ferrer is suspended for those six games, we bring him in. I think he can be an all-pro guard. I don't know how early, but even this year, I think he'll be a very good guard. So I look at the offensive line. Andre Dillard has some things to prove to me because he was more of that swing tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. But I really like this team. And I, like I said, I'm not setting any limitations or goals or expectations on it, but they're in a dance now. They have shaken the table because DeAndre Hopkins, this was a power move. And I don't think coming into today, I don't think I expected this. And I think now... What I'm looking at with this team, very, very serious. So let me know what you guys think about this move. How do you feel about this move? Can you see my thought process and what I say and why I feel like this is a power move in the AFC South, in the AFC in general? We got to think. Just a team who was a playoff contender. I mean, Derrick Henry running for 2K, all of the things that were going on with this team. Number one seed, Mike Vrabel, coach. It, all of the things that happened, and they had one bad year, and I think a lot of people tried to write them off. They didn't write themselves off. So, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments. Where does this move them in the AFC? I think it moves them a lot. And when I look at what they have done and what they did in the offseason, what they've brought in, I see a team who's going to be very competitive. And also, the last thing I want to know is, do you think, this team regrets the A.J. Brown trade. Looking at how it is now, did they move laterally or did they move upwards? Having a Traylon Burks, having a Westbrook Akine still, having DeAndre Hopkins now. Was paying A.J. Brown one guy, would that have put him in the position to now we can't have a more of a complete receiving court? Guys that really truly complement each other with above average talent. I want to know that because I look at some of the contracts. I see Jeffrey Simmons with AJ Brown. Would that have been truly possible? I look at now we have also bringing in Aziz Al Shire. We brought in Murphy Bunting. We brought in a couple of guys, Andre Dillard. Looking at all of the deals and what they tried to do, would this have been completely possible with AJ Brown? Even though they move it in a different direction, I think they still move upwards, even though I really like A.J. Brown and his game as well. So that's going to do it for today's video, just talking about everything that I see with this deal and kind of where I'm at with this deal. The Titans are coming to play. They just changed everything. <laughs> and now, yeah.